course, with the words Vayomer Shem Moshe Emor El Kohanim, Emor El Kohanim Bnei Aaron Shemarta Lehem Lenefesh Lo Yitama Biyamo. And of course, Rashi asks the obvious question: If the pasuk says Vayomer Hashem Moshe Emor El Kohanim, so why is there need to write via Marta Lehem? So Rashi, in his inimitable way, writes Emor via Marta. Who needs both? It's redundant. It's superfluous. So Rashi says it's not extra. It's there to teach us a lesson. And Rashi tells us, Lahasir Hagidoli Palakhan, which means the first time it says Emor, Moshe is speaking to the Kohani. And he says, Emor El Kohani, Moshe speaks to the parents. Emor El Kohani. The Amartha Leah means that you, Kohani, you parents should teach your children. Sometimes things are not taught in Cheder. And even if they are, there's something called a bias to the house. And therefore, Moshe Rabbeinu is telling the Kohanim, Emor el Kohanim, that you Kohanim, the Amart Aleim, you should teach the children. And hence, Rashi tells us, Lahazir Hagidolim ala Kohanim, this is a concept of Chim. <coughs> it was extremely important by the Kohanim, because the Kohanim don't learn many things in school that have to do with the Kohuna. But when it comes to the Kohuna, which is by parents, which goes to the children, which goes to grandchildren, Everything is a Masara, therefore the Chinuch is in the bias. And hence Rashi says, Lahasir Hagidolim Alakatani. Interesting, Rashi uses the words Lahasir Hagidolim Alakatani. It's not simply by parents, but Gidoli means our elders. Every generation has elders, and the elders have a tremendous responsibility. The yoke is on their shoulders to make sure the next generation understands. And hence, it's not just parents, whether it's teachers, whether it's Rebbeim, whether it's anyone involved in Pino or anyone involved in Shul's. Lahazer Hagidolim Alakatanim, all of us can be role models and examples for our children. And hence, Emor, via Marta, every one of us, by all mitzvahs, whatever we do, it is incumbent upon us the concept of Pino. I just want to take Rashi a uh, half of a step forward. Rashi uses the words Lahazer Hagidolim Alakatanim. We've had many people in our show. We've had politicians. We have had rabbanim. We've had dignitaries. And Baruch Hashem, it's a very large show. And a lot of it because you have a large show. Even though I know everyone is extremely important, but simply the fact that it is a large show and it does so many things, we have had many people grace our presence. We've never had a chief rabbi. Never the chief rabbi of Israel. When Rashi says Lahasir Hagidolim Alakhtani, we have with us today an Emister Gado. We have the chief rabbi, the Rav Harashi of Israel, and we can honestly take Rashi literally, Lahasir Hagidolim Alakatani, in the presence of Harav Metzger, we are Katani, he is the Gedolim, he is the one that is in charge. To be a chief rabbi, we're not just speaking about of a shul or a city, we're speaking about of Eretz Yisrael. Much of the Ruchnias, much of the feel, much of the Yerushalayim, whatever the country, whatever Eretz Yisrael, which is our same HaKidosh is supposed to give forth, it's supposed to teach the world, comes from the desk of the chief rabbi. Harav, Harav Metzger is the first chief rabbi that was born in Eretz Yisrael. Until now they were always born in Europe and they came over. Harav Metzger is the first one that was born in Eretz Yisrael. He is the first one that not, not only was born in Eretz Yisrael, but he served in Sahal, he served in the armed forces, uh, he was involved, he, he, he was, he was uh, in the tank, uh, tank team. He was the one, I'm not exactly sure if he drove the tank or shot at the tank, or he'll tell you himself, but he was involved. He was in the tank battalion. Uh, he was involved in Milchemet of Yom Kippurim. He was involved in the Milchama in the Lebanon. Uh, he is the youngest chief rabbi that the country of Israel has ever <laughs> produced, uh, all because of his wonderful stature. Uh, he has already written 10 Sfarim. Uh, all of them are highly acclaimed. Two of them have won the presidential awards. One of them won the gold prize. One of them won the platinum award. And to have in our presence, literally, the Gadol, the one that represents to the face of the world what Yiddish guide is all about. I know we have many politicians, but Eretz Yisrael is not just politics. It's not just another country. There's a concept of Yiddish guide. There's a concept of Torah. There's a concept of Europe. And to have a Rav HaRashi, when he walks around, he represents the Yiddish guy. He represents what it means to be a Ben Torah, to be a Gadol, to be what it means, what we all strive for in Eretz Yisrael. And to have someone of such a stature in our presence is a tremendous, tremendous chus, a tremendous merit. 
I thank everybody for coming. Without further ado, it is our esteemed comfort and honor to introduce Haraf HaGaon, Moreno Haraf, the Chief Rabbi, the Rav HaRashu Herat Yisrael, Haraf Yonah Metzger. Rabbi Yaakov Lierfeld, the President Marty Schwartz, distinguished guest, came special to this night. Rabbi, you said about Lehazir Gdoli Malaktani. During your speech, I thought a new explanation. I represent the old country of Israel, so many years old. So I represent uh, the old Israel, and I came to young Israel. <laughs> so the Rabbi also mentioned uh, that. Uh, I am the first chief rabbi that was born in the Holy Land, Eretz Israel. I, you remind me that uh, I came once to a, con a conference of rabbis in England. After my lesson, one of the rabbis stood up and asked me a question. Dear chief rabbi, I want to ask you, which blessing I have to bless if I see the first time in my life the chief rabbi of Israel? First, I didn't know what to answer him. And then I said, I said to him, because I am the first chief rabbi that was born in Eretz Israel, please say the following blessing. Baruch atah Hashem Elokeinu Melech HaOlam Boere Pri HaAdomo The third point that I want to say that I was surprised. I thought that uh, in uh, the Mother's Day you would not say Tachnon. <laughs> and I saw that you say Tachnon. But really, uh, we have not such a wonderful day, Mother's Day in Eretz Israel. We have to learn from you a little bit Kibbut M with flowers, with presents. But. Uh, when I told today to my wife that you know that uh, we are now in a special day, Mother's Day, so she said it's so simple for us every uh, Friday night, you and the children, you sing the song Eishas Chaim, so every week we have the Mother's Day, Baruch Hashem. And uh, I think it's a symbol for the Mother's Day, Yom Matzmaut. Eretz Israel is the mother of Am Yisrael. So America celebrates with us Yom Ma'ut as a simple connected to the Mother's Day. And when I, before I arrived to America, I arrived last Friday, two days ago, and someone of the rabbis invited me to this Shabbos. And I told him that I, I speak about Shabbos Emo. <laughs> I was not in California. <laughs> so, um, uh, the, so one of the rabbis invited me to celebrate the Shabbat uh, there in one of the cities in Israel. And I told him I was invited to America. So he asked me, what do you mean? To the 4th of July? Independence Day, what do you mean uh, Independence Day in America? The goddess, you will celebrate Independence Day, Yom Atzmaut? I say, yeah, they have also Yom Tov Sheini of Goliath. <laughs> so we are here, Baal Hashem, I celebrated Yom Atzmaut in the last Thursday, and then we came, I was in Yulit, in Young Israel, and it was a wonderful Shabbat, one of the nicest Shabbat that I had 
was such an excited Shabbat that in the finish of Suda Shlishit, spontaneous, all the people stood up and sang the sing song, the sing the song Atikva. And I want to share with you a small idea. If you will see in the Shulchan Aruch, in Hilchos Pesach, the Ramon says that uh, we have a rule about the dates of the holidays. The rule is called At Bash. The meaning of At Bash, the first letter from Aleph Base, Aleph, connected to the last letter, Taf. Every year, the Aleph, the first day of Pesach, <coughs> will be connected to the last letter, Taf, Tisha B'Av. It means that as was in the uh, last Pesach, the first day of Pesach was Sunday, Motsi Shabbos was a uh, Leila Seder, Sunday we celebrated the first day of uh, Pesach, Every time in the same year, Tisha B'Av will be Monday Shabbos and Sunday. Bet, the second day, is connected to this one before the last day letter, to She, to Re, She, to She. So, a Bet, the second day of Pesach, will be Shpuas. Shavuos will be exactly in Monday, as second day of Pesach, and so on. Gimel is Rosh Hashanah. He stopped when he arrived to Shvi Shel Pesach, the, yom, the last Yontif of Pesach. Zayin has a, a partner, Ayin, and he, the Ramah stopped here, and he didn't find. He didn't find a partner to Shvishal Pesach until 60 years ago. Shvishal Pesach, Zayn, his partner, Ayn Atzmaot, every year, the same day that will be Shvishal Pesach, it was Shabbos, we celebrated yesterday, Hey Be'iyah. We moved because Chilol Shabbos before to, to do it on Thursday, but originally yesterday was Hey Be'iyah, and you know you want you know another remez. This month Iyar was one of the biggest uh, the, the, the the worst if, if I can say months that have not holiday but it was sad month because 24,000 Talmidim of Abu Akiva that they uh, were died in this, in, during this month. Can be that Cheshvan has not also Yontif during all the month, but it's not a sad month. Only 60 years ago we found a new Yontif holiday in the beginning of Iyal, Hey Be Iyal, Yom Atzmaut, the second Yontif of Eretz Yisrael, Yom Yerushalayim, in the 28th of Iyal. So, in the beginning and in the finish of this month, that was 2,000 years, such a sad a month, now we have reason to celebrate a little bit. Two days, Yom Atzmaut and Yom Yerushalayim. Now look at the, how we write Iyar. Aleph, Yud, Yud, Reish. The first letter are in the beginning of the world, like in the beginning of the month. Aleph, Yud, the holiday of Eretz, Yisrael. And the last letter, Yudre Yom Yerushalayim. So you find here, even the month of Iyar, you can find the celebrations of these two days. Now we have to understand the connection 
between Shvi Shel Pesach, the day of splitting the world to Kriyas Yamsuf, to Yom Asmaut. What is the connection? And I thought it can be a nice connection. We know that all the way when we went outside from Mitzrayim, from Egypt, 40 years until we arrived to Eretz Israel, we had water from one place, a well that went with us through the desert, and the well was after the name of Miriam, the sister of Moshe Rabbeinu. And then when Miriam passed away, we had not water. And Rashi brought in the Meshem Chazal that the well was after the name of Miriam. Then Chazal asked, why was the big schus of Miriam that the well was after her name? And the answer is because Miriam knew to sing the song in Kriyas Yam Suf, Shiru la Hashem ki ga'o ga'a sus ve'rohbo rama bayam. She sing the song, and all the women also with her together, she took the drums and she danced during the miracle of Kriyas Yam Suf. Therefore, she got the schus of the well that went with us during the desert 40 years after her day. <coughs> so the question is, only Miriam sing the song? As Yashir Moishir Bovenei Yisrael, all the sons of Israel with Moishir Rabbeinu, all of us, we sing the same song. So why was particularly the schut of Miriam and not everyone of Eretz Israel. To sing the song, good, but everyone did it. I will tell you a story about two Hasidim that uh, they went for Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur every day, year after year, to their Rebbe, to be with him. They left their families, sometimes the, the, the old parents, and they went to be close to the Rebbe during Rosh Hashanah, Aserz Yemei Tshuva, and Yom Kippur. Every year when they went from their village to the Rebbe, some days was the way, they slept in some places, hotels, Achsanias, they called it. One time, they arrived to the same hotel that they used to go every year, and the owner apologized, I waited and you came a little bit later, and I am now overbooking, I have not a room for you. And I know that you come to me every year, but you came late today. So, I think that I can help you, if you will go to this and this woman, she has some rooms, she will rent it, she will give you a, a nice a host in her a home, home. So they went to this woman, she was such a simple woman, almost a primitive, she didn't know nothing about Yiddishkeit. She behaved to them so nice, warm, she gave them a, a dinner to eat, to eat, and then everything that she had to serve them, she did it. The morning after the breakfast, when they wanted to leave, she asked them, please tell me, where you are going? <laughs> and they told her, we are going to our Rebbe. And she asked them, excuse me, what is the meaning of the word Rebbe? And they explained her, it's a righteous man, Tzaddik, that he is blessing God fulfill it, and we want to be close to this righteous man. So she asked him, please do me a favor. If he does, he knows to good to, to give such a blessings, I need a blessing 
very much. What do you need? I am married 10 years and I have not kids. Please do me a favor. Give him my name and I need his blessing. They took her name, her, her mother's name, they wrote the quittle, the paper that they need to give to the rabbi, and they left the house. One hour after, she went to buy a baby carriage. Before they arrived to the rabbi, she walked to the street from the shop back to her house with the baby carriage. One of the neighbors asked her, excuse me, you have a baby? She answered, no. So why you bought a baby, a, a baby carriage? And she answered, so innocent, so simple. Yesterday you were at my home, two guests, and they promised me that they will go to the Rebbe, and the Rebbe is a righteous man, and he will bless me. So I prepare the baby carriage. So uh, they went to the Rebbe, they gave him the quittle, the paper, he blessed her, and they went back after Yom Kippur to their families. Year after, instead to go to this hotel, they went direct to this woman, because she behaved to them so nice and comfortable, and when they knocked on her door, she opened the door with a baby on her hands. And they were surprised to see one of the Hasidim asked her, is it belong to you? She said, yeah, it's because of you. You were here and you brought me the blessing through you happy and you see the results. So one of the Hasidim jumped and began to dance and ask his partner, his friend, please be happy with me. Come drink Lechaim and you see such a Sadiq, we have uh, uh, our rabbi. And the other one was very sad. And he asked him, why you are sad? Why you are not happy? We were good shluchim. So, be happy with me. No, I have a private reason. Please, leave me alone. So, he had leave me alone. He pressed him. Tell me why. What's the reason? What happened? Then he opened his feeling and he said to him, look, I cannot understand our Rebbe. I am married 15 years and I have not kids. And I leave my own parents, my, my wife, alone. I have said them so many years. I go to the Rebbe every year and I ask him the same blessing. I need kids. And he gives him every year the same blessing. How can it be? She doesn't know even what a rabbi is. And you see the results, and I have not kids until now. So he answered him, you know, it's a good question. You have to ask the rabbi. We are now to the way to him. Please ask him. But now we have to, to drink Lechaim. So they, they drank Lechaim, and then and they went back to the rabbi. And the first uh, question that this Hasid asked the Rebbe, how can it be that I, am, I come to you every year and I ask you the same question and I have not such good results as this woman that she doesn't know even what the Rebbe is. So the Rebbe asked him, please ask me the question in Motsi Yom Kippur. After Yom Kippur he came to the Rebbe and asked him the, uh, the question, then the Rabbi answered him with a question. Tell me the truth. You, are, you come to me every year, years after years. I know it and I appreciate it. But when every year I bless you, it was one time that you came back to your home and you bought also a baby carriage like this woman. He said, no. Now I will, I will explain you. What is the meaning of a blessing of a rabbi, of a righteous man? What's the meaning of a blessing? Stam, 
simple, you say something, it's hocus pocus, it's a miracle. No. The blessing had to be a basis of a mona, of believing. If you believe there is a place that the blessing will be put on. But if you the basis without believing, the blessing had not where to put on, on this. She was such an innocent, she believed so much about my blessing. Before you arrived to me, she went to buy the baby carriage. Therefore, she won. But you, you say, if it will not be successful, it will not be against me, good. It's not real believing. This was the reason why Miriam won the name of the well after her. Because when she began to dance after Kriyas Yamsov with the drums, from where she found the drums? Did you hear about the factory in the desert of drums? Where she found it? You know, Hazal told us she bought it in Egypt before we went out from Egypt outside to the desert. Because she said to herself, can be that Hashem will do to us in the future more miracles and I want to prepare myself to dance with drums and to do Lebedic a little bit. So she prepared before we went in Siyas Mitzrayim, in Egypt. Therefore, because she has such a believing in God, she had this host. Even every Jew sing the same song, Al Yosheh Moshe, but no one brought the drums from Egypt. She bought the baby carriage in Egypt. between this case of Kriyas Yamsov, Miriam, the drums, and old happiness connected to Yom Atzmaut to remind us we are celebrating today in 60 years to Medinat Israel. But we bought this land 2,000 years ago. 2,000 years we had all the dreams. When will be the time that we shall come to Eretz Israel? Every cup of wine was the, the picture of Koisla Maharovi. Every tishtach, the cover of Chales, Migdal David, Yerushalayim, every paroches, Imeshkachech Yerushalayim, Tishkach Yemini, Every synagogue, the faith to Jerusalem, the Mizrach with all the distinguished people of the, every community was to the world face to Eretz Israel. But when you will go behind the Kotel, there is a mask that belongs to the Muslims. And when they, you will see to which place they are going, to the back, to Har Habayit. They think about Mecca and Saudi. We have only one mountain that belongs to us. They have Mecca, Medina, even they are there. <coughs> the back is to this place. Their face are for Saudi and not to us. The connection between Shvi and Pesach and Yom Ha'atzma'ut is the believing that we bought the baby carriage Eretz Israel much more before, before the creating of Medinat Israel. Without these dreams, we had not this uh, Medinat. And I have to tell you the truth that um, before I became the chief rabbi of Israel, I didn't know exactly the meaning of Presenting the Medinat Israel. I was a rabbi, 
I was born in Al Israel. It was so simple to me. We are citizens in Israel, like every American Jew that is a citizen in America. So it's not such a big deal. But when I became a chief rabbi, I found and I I, I saw in my eyes how it's important to represent a Medina, a country of Jews. And I will bring you an example. President Putin invited me to be a guest in a conference in Moscow with religious leaders. 30 religious leaders around a circle of a table. He sat there. He brought Muslims, in, uh, uh, Hindus, Buddhists, some uh, kinds of uh, churches, the Russian church, the Greek church, the Catholics, of course. Every group, every religion was around this table. And I represent the Jewish nation. I was surprised that he gave me a lot of honor. He said, he sat in one chair. The second chair was belong to the patriarch of the Russian church, very old man and important for them. And near him, he put my name. Second after him. One of the important leaders in Iran, the Hayatullah, the, the, one of the heads there, set five chairs after me. So, I saw the program before, and I asked the patriarch if it be possible to change something. He asked me, what do you mean? And he, I, I, I said to him, I saw that the president put a, a, a Putin will speak the first after this you, the patriarch, and then you ask me to speak after you. And after me will speak the Hayatullah from Iran on, the, uh, uh, on behalf of the Muslims. I ask you please change it. I want to speak after him. I want to hear him and to answer him. Because I don't know how long the president will sit with us. So he said, why not? I agree. So the Putin spoke the, Rish, uh, the first, then uh, the Patriarch, and then the Hayatullah. And the Hayatullah <coughs> began to speak about peace, and peace, Allah Rahman, God in mercy, and we have to give honor to every person, to every human being, to, to take care of all the world. And such a nice doshin. Every rabbi will be proud to say such wonderful words in every community. And then when uh, I had to say something, I first of all, I say something that it was one week after four diplomats were killed from the Russians in Iraq. So I say something uh, uh, warm words to the president on behalf of the Jewish nation and we have unfortunately uh, experienced as innocent people between our nation where killed so many people so I can feel your feeling much more than everyone around this uh, um, table and I say something I say something for the Russian nation and then I jumped to, to answer to this Yahayatullah and I said to him, please, I think that you had a mistake in the address. You spoke here around this table about peace, honor, respect. You have to tell these words to your Bin Laden. He has to hear your voice not our, uh, around this table. And then I took out the three pictures of our soldiers, two in the hands of the Hezbollah, one in the hands of Hamas. And I asked him, why 
there three innocent soldiers they didn't shoot we were not in the war during the war why you caught them and even a piece of information to their mothers you don't want to give us if they are still alive or has khalila not nothing this is behaving of allah rahman rahman is of god you believe as i believe that your father was abraham he said yes so my father was also abraham do you believe that our father will be happy in the heaven that one of you people his son will kill himself only to kill the other son of abraham so i spoke very very well in the middle the patriarch asked something to the president putin his old man he forgot to close the microphone so everyone heard his question i heard something but i didn't understand i didn't understand the the language they spoke russian someone after uh, explained me what he asked the president he didn't know how to be able with me because one side i spoke with uh, to the russians about the hobbes availing and the uh, after the other side i spoke again the muslims and he knows that putin want to be close to the muslims so well, how to behave with me to say shakoyer or against <laughs> so uh, and putin answered him you can't say shakoyer so uh, putin alone came after my speech and shake my hands he knew me i didn't know that he remember me because i did to him a, a little bit troubles with why because when he came 2 years ago in holomoid pesach to jerusalem his staff pressed us a lot that when he will be in one of the nicest hotels in jerusalem they have to bring him pizza to his suite and i say to them niet <laughs> no pizza in pesach <laughs> and he ate three days matzah <laughs> i explained them from from you plate it will go down to the dishwasher and it will destroy all the caches of pesach from all the hotel i cannot do it so uh, and to send in plastic uh, plates is not nice so uh, they they agreed to eat matzah and by the way he likes very much the filthy fish because when he was young his neighbor were jews and he likes until today the filthy fish because he learned from them uh, that it's a good taste so um after this conference one of the rabbis asked me in moscow please come to visit my synagogue it's emergency i asked him please very important what happened i asked him and he remind me i don't know if you remember two years ago one month before pesach one of the young a uh, people 17 18 years old russian goy came between minchem mayrev during shmones with a knife he entered a synagogue in moscow and wanted to kill the innocent people during their prayer and the son of the rabbi jumped at him and they put him in jail and he asked me please the people are so sad please give them a little bit strength it's very important to us you visit here so i agreed i came <laughs> the synagogue was full with people and it was a very very important visit there when we finished i asked by the way the rabbi tell me what's going on with this guy what a murder he didn't kill but he wanted to kill so what's going on he's still in in the uh, prison but we are during the trial so i asked him he has a, a lawyer 
He said, yes, he has a true a lawyer. So I asked him, how can this lawyer to defend such a murder? The all the cameras saw him that he went inside with a knife. So he said to me, Rabbi, you will be surprised to hear how clever and bad man this lawyer, antisemist. Why? He came the last week, he told me, with a calendar to the court and said to the judge, dear judge, you see the calendar? This case was exactly one month during Purim, one day after Purim, before Passover. As you know the tradition, our tradition, that they bake the matzahs with the Christian blood. And this innocent guy went to, through the road near the synagogue and they pulled him inside with strength, with power, and they wanted to kill him to use his blood to bake the matzahs. And he's such an innocent one to defend himself. So he took the knife. Therefore, was what happened there. So I was shocked to hear it was one year before that he was tried. And we are not speaking about 100 years ago. So after this case, the, the mayor of the <coughs> Moscow invited me to visit him. The mayor of Moscow is such a small guy, without airs, how you say, Karahat? Bold. A very strong man, he was the leader of the Communist Party in Moscow. He was one of the candidates to be a president against Putin in the past. Yuri Lutschkov, his name, when he gives uh, a speck on his uh, patch on his uh, desk, all the building is shaking. And people are afraid he has 30 million uh, citizens in his city. 30 million, the number of all the Jews in all over the world, in one city. <coughs> so, during the conversation, I asked him, tell me, please, do you believe that we are baking matzot with Christian blood? He said, of course. <coughs> we learned it in our schools, in the communist time. And I myself know the truth because I have two secretaries that they are Jews. I have a vice mayor that he is Jew. And they told me this nonsense. But uh, all my friends, they believe. Now, Rabbi, do you understand my problem that we have so many antisemites here in my city? So I, I said to him, please, if it be possible, I have an advice. Please, if you can give us a small piece of land in the center of your city, we should build there the first Jewish museum. And in this museum, we should put some corners. Corner for Rosh Hashanah with Shofar, Talis and Kittel. Machzo. Then another corner for Sukkis, or Yom Kippur, Sukkis, Sukkah, Lulav, Etrog, Hanukkah, Hanukkiah, Oil, Purim, Rashan, Megillas, Esther, um, Pesach. We should put someone to show to everyone how really we bake matzot. Flour and water. That's all. But please promise me, dear mayor, that you will order all the kids from kindergarten until students in university. Every person has to come to pass this museum that a little bit he will touch our tradition to explain him a little bit how really we make that He looked at his vice mayor and said, wow, clever idea. 
And then he moved his head and he asked me, but who will pay to this building? I will tell you the truth, I was lucky because came with me one of the richest people in our nation today, in our generation, Lev Levayev. And I told, I said to him, Lev, the question will belong to you. <laughs> so uh, he, he, answered, he said, he was fair, he said, Dear Mayor, if the Chief Rabbi of Israel asked you this piece of land, I will take the responsibility with some of my friends and we shall build it. I hope next year I will come to put the Azebizusa. We are doing the building, to build the building. You have one example how it is important to Am Yisrael in every place that we have our Medinat Israel. Without Medinat Israel, we have not Rosh Shalah, we have not Nesir Medina, we have not Zahal, Without Medinat Israel, we have not also Chief Rabbi of Israel. <laughs> and without Medinat Israel, it's as not a reason to connect all the Jews in all over the world. You have to see, in the last week, so many Jews came for 60 years celebration of Israel. So many languages you had in Jerusalem. It was such a nice <coughs> view to see and to hear. I want to finish my uh, speech and to say, first of all, to thank the rabbi and the wonderful president that you gave him hand and I appreciate what he done, did. The rabbi told me, you don't need to speak about me, you have to speak a lot about our president and I appreciate very much, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Schwartz. And I want to finish to say a small word of the Kotzke Rebbe. The Kotzke Rebbe was asked from one of the Israel city, Rebbe, if the Mashiach will come, you will run with us to welcome him? He said, no. You will not come with us to welcome him, to be the first one to welcome the Mashiach? No, he said. You will run, I will wait. Why? And when you will finish to welcome him, I will come the last to say Shalom Aleichem Mashiach. Then the Mashiach will ask me, Kotzke Rebbe, where have you been until today, to now? Why you came so late? And I will answer me, Mashiach, do you ask me the question? <laughs> I ask you! So, we pray to Mashiach Hashem that he will come as soon as possible and we shall celebrate all the next years of Eretz Israel with a lot of successful, with security, with peace, and with all the things that we developed all the last 60 years. First place in high tech, first place in security, first place in, in uh, agriculture, so many in medicine, so many subjects here. When we put the energy, the Yiddish Corp created a lot of things. By the way, do you know who one is the important rabbi in our generation? Rabbi Google. <laughs> you press the question and he answers you all the information that you need. The important rabbi in the world. Who created the Google? Two Jews. The Yiddish Corp. Everything when you want to find something good, you find in our na na nation and a lot from Israel. Every seven years, we had in one of the citizens that got the Nobel Prize. So, Baruch Hashem, we are lucky. And may God bless our country, our wonderful friends, brothers. You are here, but I know that you are hard with us, always. With the good, or Hasim Khalira is bad. Thank you very much. God bless you.
it's I and I. Baruch Atadunai Eloheinu Melech Haulam Asher Kiddishanu Bemitzvotav Vetzivanu Al Sfirat HaOmer Ahayom Shnaim Veesrim Yom Shem Shlosha Shavuot Veyom Echad LaOmer 